that we see that. Uh, a lot of us grew up believing at any moment we could lose it all. How many of you grew up in that atmosphere? A few of us, right? Uh, that how many of you have had life going just going great, everything's working out just fine, that you just know that something wrong is going to happen? I think mo many of us live in that genre. You know, that we're, we're just waiting for the shoe to drop, per se. That's the, that's the old saying. We're waiting for the shoe to drop because we know that things have been going so well for so long that something bad is getting ready to happen. And I think that when we grow up in that atmosphere, we lose focus and lose track of what all the good things are because we're so busy waiting for the shoe to drop. And that first song, the first verse of this song is where we're going to stay today. If we grew up believing that we could lose it all, now I, that we have to kind of figure out and put in context what the word all means, okay? So if I said to you, if you lost it all, what is your all? Go ahead, throw some stuff at me. Family, that's going to be the number one answer. If we were playing Family Feud, bing, you know, there it is, number one answer. Do you want to play or pass? Hey, you're going to play, okay. Freedom. freedom. If we lost our freedom, what else? I'm sorry, property, possessions. If we lost our possessions, yes. If we lost our jobs, what else? Health. We lost our health. What else? Faith. We lost our faith. Man, we're going to be talking about all of these here in the next few minutes because these are things that are very important to losing it all. If you lost your family, say that, you know, we grow up thinking that we, we're going to live in an order of however we're uh, born. You know, whatever age we are, we're going to live a full life and we're going to pass on to, to heaven. And when that happens, it should go in a progressive order of how we are born. I, I've done a lot of funerals for, for children in which the parents sit there and go, this never should have happened this way. Um, I've, I've done a lot of funerals for, for parents in which the grandparent is still alive and they say, this never should have happened this way. I, I should be gone. And I lost it all. And we grieve at those moments. If we lose friends, how about friends? We lose friends. How many of us are still friends with some of the kids we grew up with in school? If you're still in school, hopefully you're still friends with the people that you are in school. But, you know, some of us move on and we change jobs, we change careers, we change locations. And therefore, we don't keep in touch with the, with the friends that we used to have. And, and pretty soon, it becomes a distance, you know. And we always have the saying that goes, you know, we need to get together for dinner sometime. You know what? You're right. We do need to get together for dinner sometime. And unless we put it on our calendar, what happens? That was just a, something that was said that we could probably live 10 seconds longer if we wouldn't have breathed those words in, into existence, right? And so... We have to make a better uh, choice of saying, we're going to do this, and we're going to put it on the calendar and make it happen. What about relationships? I mean, we, we lose a marriage, and, and maybe that was our all. And, and we focused so much on marriage that we lost who we were in, in that battle. I mean, when, if, if you have been blessed with children... There's a chance that by the time the person that you were dating and that you fell in love with and that you married and once the kids come along that when they move out of the house and you become an empty nester you look across the table and go I have no clue who you are because we've been running back and forth kids from wherever they're going that we lose track of who we were and our all is our marriage and we've lost it. We could also lose our all in material things, material possessions. I mean, if, if we had our house was destroyed by a, a, a storm, a tornado, let's say, that may be our all. If, if we lost our, our boat, our vacation spot, our whatever, 
we have to fill in what our all is. If we lost it today, how would we react? That's the question at hand. How would we react to our all? Our faith. How many of us have lost our faith? Maybe have even regained it back and have had something happen that we've lost it again. Maybe it's a, a, a church situation. Because, you know, churches aren't perfect. And, and we, we may lose our grip of who God is in our life because of other people in the church. And that's the reason whenever we get to Sunday worship service, I, I continually preach on that this is about our relationship with Jesus. This has nothing to do with the people that are sitting around you. Even though you may love them with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind, Jesus is your Savior. Has nothing to do with anybody else. And it's our own personal relationship that dictates who God is in our life. So as we look at somebody that may have lost it all, we're going to be in the first two chapters of Job. Oh man, there's a guy. If you've, never, if you've ever heard of Job, you can see where he lost it all. And you're going to hear in a few moments of, of what friends can do in Job's life. But we're also going to hear a very specific special nugget that is in the back of the book of Job that is encouraging for all of us today. Okay, I mean every one of us in this room. No matter where you are in your life, there is a golden nugget that is found in the book of Job, and we'll get there here in just a second. Now, if we looked at recent history of something or someone that has lost it all, we could look at the Bahamas and Hurricane Dorian wiped off the map. Those people would probably look at it and go, we lost everything. We lost our homes. Many of us lost family members. Many of us lost our businesses, our jobs, the way we make money. Some of us lost our second home, our destination, where we, where we live, where we, where we have our family come in. So if we look at just in hurricanes, how it wipes things off, but the beauty is, is how it's rebuilt. I'm going to go to a real personal thing. In 2000, was it 2011, 2012, when did the tornado hit uh, Joplin? I think it was 2011. I was there two weeks after that tornado had hit with two of my pastor friends. Now, if you've ever wanted to keep three pastors quiet, you send them through a destructed area such as Joplin, and what we saw was devastation. Cars piled up upon cars. The one image that I cannot get out of my mind of Joplin is this mattress that was in top of a, a telephone pole, and it looked like it had been thrown there by a dart. And this mattress was just hanging off the top of the telephone pole. That's usually not where you're going to see a bed mattress. And we were quiet. And we saw the devastation. And when we started talking to, because we were sending missions, uh, you know, the Joplin became the next ocean because everybody was sending water there. And they had no place to put it. And when I was talking to the brand new city administrator, he said he didn't look at it like that. He didn't look at it as a devastation. He looked at it as God had wiped the slate clean for him to come back in and help rebuild Joplin. I thought, wow, that, that's, that's a lot. They were supposed to be rebuilding Joplin in five years. There was so much help and so much giving in, in the Joplin area that they were able to rebuild in three. And it's beautiful of what they've done. But lives were affected by the tornado, don't you think? Uh, some of them, they're all that they, they were talking about today, was gone. Today I want to read the first two passages, first two uh, chapters of Job. And if you'll hang with me for a little bit, we're going to break down chapter 1, then we'll break down chapter 2, and then I'm going to give you the golden nugget. You all okay with that? 
good, because if you would have shook your head, no, I still would have been all right with it. Job was a man who lived in us. He was honest inside and out, a man of his word, who was totally devoted to God and hated evil with a passion. He had seven sons and three daughters. He was also very wealthy, 7,000 head of sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 teams of oxen, 500 donkeys, and a huge staff of servants. The most influential man in all the East. His sons used to take turns hosting parties in their homes, always inviting their three sisters to join them in their merrymaking. When the parties were over, Job would get up early in the morning and sacrifice a burnt offering for each of his children, thinking, maybe one of them sinned by defying God inwardly. Job made a habit of this sacrificial atonement just in case they'd sinned. One day when the angels came to report to God, Satan, who was the designated accuser, came along with them. God singled out Satan and said, what have you been up to? Satan answered God, going here and there, checking things out on earth. God said to Satan, have you noticed my friend Job? There's no one quite like him, honest and true to his word, totally devoted to God and hating evil. Satan retorted, do you think Job does all that out of sheer goodness of his heart? Why, no one has ever had it so good. You pamper him like a pet. Make sure nothing bad ever happens to him or his family or his possessions. Bless everything he does. He can't lose. But what do you think would happen if you reached down and took away everything that is his? He'd curse you right to your face. That's what. God replied, we'll see. Go ahead. Do what you want with all of that is his. Just don't hurt him. Then Satan left the presence of God. Sometime later, while Job's children were having one of their parties, at the home of the oldest son, a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys grazing in the field next to us when, when Sabians attacked. They stole the animals and killed the field hands. I'm the only one to get out alive and tell you what happened. While he was still talking, another messenger arrived and said, bolts of lightning struck the sheep and the shepherds and fried them. Burn them to a crisp. I'm the only one to get out alive and tell you what happened. While he was talking, another messenger arrived and said, Chaldeans coming from three directions raided the camels and massacred the camel drivers. I'm the only one to get out alive and tell you what happened. While he was still talking, another messenger arrived and said, Your children were having a party at the home and the oldest brother when a tornado swept in off the desert and struck the house. It collapsed on the young people and they died. I'm the only one to get out alive and tell you what happened. Job got his got to his feet, ripped his robe, shaved his head, and then fell to the ground and worshipped. Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I'll return to the womb of the earth. God gives. God takes. God's name be ever blessed. Not once through all of this did Job sin. Not once did he blame God. Now if we break down chapter 1. First of all, I would have if I'm Job, I don't want any more messengers coming my way that day. If I would have saw another person coming my way, I probably would have walked away, don't you think? Wouldn't that have been the, the, the thing that we think of the most? We're going to walk away from what is going on. I don't need to hear from anybody else. But what I really want to focus on is how God and Satan's interaction. I almost went back to, how many of you have ever seen the movie Santa Claus 3? Santa Claus 3. Anybody know what Santa Claus 3 was about? Who was the villain? Jack Frost. Jack Frost, played by Martin Short. It was a beautiful movie. It's a great movie. And, and I can see this interaction between Tim Allen and Martin Short. Tim Allen is Santa Claus. He gives everything to everybody. And, and, and Jack Frost is going to come in and steal Christmas. Could you see that playing out here? As God... And as Satan were talking, he was saying, first of all, if I would be Job, I'd say, God, don't point me out. You know, don't single me out. I mean, didn't you hear God say, did you see my friend Job? Did, did, did Satan ever bring up, hey, did you see Job? No, it wasn't Satan that said it. It was God that said, did you ever see Job? First thing I would say to God, don't ever point me out again. And, and so then he says, you can take everything from him. Just don't hurt him. 
How many of us in our everyday lives, if we have something taken away from us, it automatically hurts us? It automatically does. We start feeling that deep within our soul. That something was taken away from me. I feel it. You're hurting me, whether you're thinking you're hurting me or not. And so as he comes through and he takes all of this stuff away from, from Job, what does Job do? Job does something that many people have not done before. He says, naked I came in, naked I will leave. I, I will not take God's name in vain right now. Too many people, when things happen in the world, will run away from God. See, we have this thing called flight or fight. Are we going to fight for our freedom spiritually, or are we going to run away from it? And that's what's happening. That's the option that Job has right now. I can either stay with it and believe in God, or I can run away from God. How many of us have ever been put in that situation? Many of us, right? So then, let's move on over to chapter 2. One day, when the angels came to report to God... Satan also showed up. God singled out Satan saying, and what have you been up to? I love that. And what have you been up to? Satan answered God, oh, going here and there, checking things out. Then God said to Satan, have you noticed my friend Job? There it is again. There's no one quite like him, is there? Honest and true to his word, totally devoted to God and hating evil. He still has a firm grip on his integrity. You tried to trick me into destroying him, but it didn't work. Satan answered, a human would do anything to save his life. But what do you think would happen if he reached down and took away his health? He'd curse you to your face, that's what. God said, all right, go ahead. You can do what you like with him, but mind you, don't kill him. Satan left God and struck Job with terrible sores. Job had, was, had ulcers and scabs from head to, to, to foot. They itched and oozed so badly that he took a piece of broken pottery to scrape himself, then went and sat on a trash heap among the ashes. Doesn't sound like a lot of fun, does it? His wife said, Still holding on to your precious integrity, are you? Curse God and be done with it. He told her, You're talking like an empty-headed fool. We take the good days from God, why not also the bad days? Not once through all this did Job sin. He said nothing against God. Three of Job's friends heard of all the trouble that had fallen on him. Each traveled from his own country. Eliphaz from Timon, Bildad from Shuha, Zophar from Namoth. And went together to Job to keep him company and comfort him. When they first caught sight of him, they couldn't believe what they saw. They hardly recognized him. They cried out in lament, ripped their robes, and dumped dirt on their heads as a sign of their grief. Then they sat with him on the ground. Seven days and nights they sat there without saying a word. They could see how rotten he felt, how deeply he was suffering. Now, in this passage of scripture, we see that now his health has been taken away. How many of you have had your health taken away? How many of you have had an ailment that has kept you away from going to your job, a broken whatever, that has kept you laid up for a little bit and you couldn't do it, a sickness, the flu, a migraine, whatever it might be, that has kept you away from going in and doing what, what your work called you to do that day, and it gets worse, maybe Maybe you've been told that you have cancer or you have a disease that does not have a cure. What happens? You fight or you flight. That's what I would do. And so now Job has this going on that he has all these sores and he doesn't even look right. He looks dysfunctional. He, he looks not even like himself. They don't even recognize him. His three buddies don't even recognize who he is. And then there's always 
friends who love to give advice. How many of you got friends that like to give advice? How many of your friends give you great advice? Why is it that not many of you raised your hand? If they only knew, right? But there's always people that are going to show up and say, have you thought about what you've done wrong? This is what happens here. Uh, his three buddies, Eliphaz, uh, Bildad, and, and Shuha, or uh, Zophar, we're going to rename them for simple Western names, okay? First of all, Eliphaz is Eli. Whether he likes it or not, right now his name is Eli. Bildad, what do you think his name should be? Bill. Bill. That's right, Bill. His name's Bill. And what about Zophar? I don't know. Come up with one. What? What did you, what did you guys say? Zohan. <laughs> Zorro. Okay, so these are your guys. Eli, Bill, and Zorro show up to give you advice. Okay, they're, they're going to come in and give you some advice. And they're thinking that they're giving you wise, godly advice. And all of a sudden, everything that they're saying doesn't make sense. For the next few chapters, uh, chapter 4 through chapter 32, there is this ongoing talk between these three dudes and Job. And they're having this balance attack between each other going, you should have done this. Well, you should have done this. And you should have done that. And he's sitting there going, but I did. But I did. But I did. And God still hates me. I don't know why. God's let me down. But I don't know why. And this goes on. And then you add in another guy here in, the, in 33 through 37 uh, named Elihu. I think that's, that's what his name is. We're gonna, I can't call him Eli the second, so we're going to have to come up with a different name for this guy. And now he's saying, I've been sitting off listening to you guys, and I didn't agree with anything, but now I feel like I should probably jump in and add my two cents worth. Have you ever sat in a board meeting? I'm gonna, have you ever sat in a board meeting? Well, if you haven't, I, I'm going to bring you to one. And, and you're going to have a lot of different opinions and you're going to have a, li a lot of different things that are going on and being said. And, and a lot of them, you walk out of there, a lot of these board meetings, you walk out and you go, what just happened? Have you ever been there before, or am I just the only one that's ever had that happen to me? Where you say, man, I just wasted an hour and a half of my life that I will ever, never, ever get back because everything didn't make sense. Now I'm getting some head shakes back. Now you guys are starting to talk. Now you guys feel what I'm feeling, right? This is what was going on with Job for a while. And Job kept turning to his friends and waiting for God. How many of us in our time of trial and when our time when we lose it all, that we wait on God? Sometimes we do. And sometimes that's just not the first person we want to turn to right now. We don't want God telling us what to do. This is what God happens. He shows up with Job. And he says these words to Job. And I, I think that, I think if we insert our name here, we're going to personalize this today, okay? I want to personalize chapter 38 for you. God confronts Job. And now finally, God answered Job, from the eye of the violent storm, here is the golden nugget. He said, why do you confuse the issue? Why do you talk without knowing what you're talking about? Pull yourself together, Job. You ever had anybody ever tell you to pull yourself together? So insert your name. Pull yourself together, Troy. Get your stuff together, man. Put your name in that. I'm going to say it together, okay? Pull yourself together. No, not me. <laughs> that was good. Your name. I didn't know I had to be so specific. Students, here we go again. 
Pull yourself together. There, that's much better. It's not like having 6,000 people yell Troy back at you again, you know. Up on your feet, stand tall. I have some questions for you, and I want some straight answers. And here's where it comes in, to personalize it to our problems, our situations, what we are going through when we lose it, what we apparently think is our all. Where were you when I created the earth? Tell me, since you know so much. Who decided on its size? Certainly you will know that. Who came up with the blueprints and the measurements? How was its foundation poured and who set the cornerstone? While the morning stars sang in chorus and all the angels shouted praise. And who took charge of the ocean when it gushed forth like a baby from the womb? That was me. In other words, he's looking at Job going, that was me, man. You had nothing to do with that. And for us, it's very hard to hear those words. Because why? We are control freaks whether we want to know it or not. We want to control situations. We want to control our all. And Jesus is saying, God is saying right here, you can't. You've got to give it to me. He says, I wrapped it in soft clouds and tucked it in safely at night. Then I made a playpen for it, a strong playpen so it couldn't run loose, and said, stay here, this is your place. Your wild tantrums are confined to this place. And have you ever ordered morning, get up? Told dawn, get to work. So you could seize earth like a blanket and shake out the wicked like cockroaches? As the sun brings everything to light, brings out all the colors and shapes, the cover of darkness is snatched from the wicked. They're caught in the very act. Have you ever gotten to the true bottom of things, explored the labor thing caves of the deep ocean? Do you know the first thing about death? Do you have one clue regarding death's dark mysteries? And do you have any idea how large this earth is? Speak up if you have even the beginning of an answer. Do you know where light comes from and where darkness lives? So you can take them by the hand and lead them home when they get lost? Why, of course you know that. You've known them all your life, grown up in the same neighborhood with them. Have you ever traveled to where snow is made, seen the vault where hail is stockpiled, the arsenals of hail and snow that I keep in readiness for times of trouble and battle and war? Can you find your way to where lightning is launched or to the place from which the wind blows? Who do you suppose carves canyons for the downpours of rain and charts the route of thunderstorms that bring water to unvisited fields, deserts no one ever lays eyes on, drenching the useless wasteland so they're carpeted with wildflowers and grass? And who do you think is the father of rain and dew, the mother of ice and frost? You don't for a minute imagine those marvels of weather just happen, do you? Can you catch the eye of the beautiful uh, Pleiades sisters or distract Orion from his hunt? Can you get Venus to look your way? Or get the great bear and her cubs to come out and play? Do you know the first thing about the sky's constellations and how they affect things on Earth? Can you get the attention of the clouds and commission a shower of rain? Can you take charge of the lightning bolts and have them report to your orders? In other words, we don't. And we can't. And we have to rely on who created us the same one that created all of this stuff that he's talking to Job about. And when it feels like we are losing our all, whether it be our relationships, our families, our health, to death, our jobs, our spiritual life, our faith, whatever it might be, God is saying, I control it for you. Just turn to me. And for some of us, that's very, very difficult. So when we are ready to turn to him, God says, I'm always available, no matter what. It's a beautiful thing. I, I want to delve deeper into this, uh, the next lyric in, this, in the um, song, and we will do that next week. I think I've hopefully given you enough to, to go on today, and if you feel like reading all of that of Job, please do so, because it will be a life changer. It was for me this week.